My name is Robert Dieso, and I come from Canton, Massachusetts. I serve with the 328th Infantry, uh, part of the 26th Yankee Division. I served in France and in Belgium and in a little part of Germany. I, along with others, were taken out to be individual replacements in the war and was actually sent to Europe. And that's where I joined up with the 26th Yankee Division. And I went to the 328th and from there on down to uh, F Company. I was sitting with my first squad of the 1st Platoon and that was the first time I ever experienced uh, artillery because we were shelled, which scared the living daylights out of us. The regiment was going up on line and so all of the units. And I remember that specifically as we walked through uh, the streets of this town, there were German soldiers dead on the side of the road. That's the first time I'd seen you know, anything like that. And that's an eye opener and a shocker. And then as we started going through open area, moving up towards where the line was, they're carrying stretchers back. That really opens your eyes up now. I mean, all of this training and everything else is passe. This is the real thing. You are there. My squad leader, a fellow named Julian Violin, turned to me and he says, stick with me, kid. And he took off and I took off right behind him. And we ran for, I'm going to say, probably about 30 seconds. And now enemy fire has started on us, machine gun fire, small arms fire, and then even mortars were starting to drop on us. And all of a sudden, Julian went down. I figured, okay, that's it. I go down right behind him. And I'm waiting for him to tell me what to do. What, is, you know, what, is, what does he want? And nothing's happening. And so I called out to him and called out, nothing. I crawled up and he was dead. He'd been killed. The first time I'd ever seen a man killed and also my squad leader. We got ourselves through the day. It was one of the three of us that came up was also killed. And uh, in the, as evening came on, we were replaced by a recon outfit because we had taken so many casualties, we were not a viable organization. And on the way back, going back through the battlefield, uh, there was a tree that was sort of at a leaning like that and there was a body up against it and the helmet had come off and when I looked over this was a kid that I uh, had been with since basic training he was dead and I started to get out of line to go over and uh, a sergeant grabbed me he said where are you going I said it's my friend and he says you can't help him he says get go back in line and keep going and I cried all the way back because, uh, you know, three things in one day is a lot to uh, swallow. And so that was the beginning of my action in, uh, in war. This is a picture of Julian Violin's gravestone in Long Island, New York at a veteran's cemetery. And I've never forgotten him, and I never will. So I come up here to this room and I walk in and I just tap it three times and then I say hi Julian how are you and I feel that he does hear me I wouldn't talk to him if I didn't think he heard me and I my response is I don't hear it in my ears but just something will happen maybe I have a problem today and I'm out in the car driving a little later and all of a sudden the answer to the problem comes and I believe that's Julian responding to me and uh, that's the way I go with them. I've been doing this for a number of years and I'm not going to stop. <laughs> in just the two or three days that I was with him, he was treating me like a kid brother. He was watching out for me, a scared kid, and I've never forgotten that. I'll go way back to basic training. I remember his name well, Lieutenant Wheeler. He said, okay guys, sit down. We did. He said, you hate me. He said, that's what I wanted. He said, because if I taught you anything here that will save your life, I accomplished my mission. He said, it's all I wanted you to know what to do in every circumstance, not to stand around and think. Act, act, act. And I was there until uh, mid-April, and at mid-April I uh, suffered a concussion. We're going along this woods on our left side, this open area on our right, spread across the open to move forward and that's when the tanks opened up on us and the direct fire I mean wasn't launched artillery direct 
And then that's the last I remember. I would just say I woke up in a hospital. From there, that was the end of my combat time because I was reassigned into Paris into the Transportation Corps. A lot of times the people will say, you know, you guys are all heroes. And I say, no, we're survivors. The heroes are the ones that didn't come back, like Julian Violin. Thankful for being back. Also, very proud to have served, in the, and especially in the Yankee division, a hometown, if you will. I was very proud of that, and still proud of it, and will always be proud of it.